And we are live. Sorry about the delay, guys. Welcome. And let me put the windows first. The monitor in here. Welcome, everyone, to another 100 Days of Code. My name is Alexio, and on today's episode, we are going to continue refactoring. Well, continue refactoring the whole project, but we're going to refactor specifically the back end. So on the last two streams, I just focused on the mobile app and now I'm going to give some of the refactoring love to the backends <laughs> and make it just a bit better. Um, if we have time, which to be honest, we never have, um, we might just do, we might just start working on the database because we do need to create users in order to create them, we need to have a sort of, a, you know, user system behind it, which kind of implies that it needs to have a database of sorts. Uh, but one step at a time. Let's just, uh, let me just see. What do I need to do here? Checking if the stream is okay. And also, I forgot about doing something here. Yeah. Although you have nice tunes, I don't have nice tunes, unfortunately. So I'm going to a page of a douchebag. Which might or might not have something funny for me to, to listen to. And I'm pretty sure the douchebag name is this one. Unless... Yes, really. Oh, there's another. Alexi Rodriguez. Ah. Okay. Okay. Now this is not just uh this is not a plug <laughs> for my SoundCloud playlists. Not really. Uh but I made some and they might be just perfect for the stream and it's like one hour and something. Yeah, that's fine. Hopefully I'll not fall asleep with this one. The other ones are too aggressive. <laughs> so we're ready to start. Uh, let's just jump in. Uh what am I looking at here? So we still didn't do these two implementations, which is fine. I didn't really want to jump in into new new stuff here. Uh, I just want to go back and ref well work on the backend for a bit, just because we don't have any pending issues, I believe. So like these two friends. Uh, let's see. Yep. Perfect. So, if I go back and select the backend, okay, let's create a new issue just for doing the refactoring of stuff. Uh, could be. Okay, we'll just call it enhancement. Now the main goal here would be uh, remove refactor the art code code. I don't like it, but uh, I don't really see a bad explanation to this one, to be honest. So for me, right now. Will be this one. <laughs> oh god. Even for me, I'm a not native English, but kinda sounds just too far fetched. But the, the important thing is <laughs> the important thing is to be productive, I guess. So first things we need to do then is to run both projects. And it needs to be both because since I was an idiot that insists on doing different things other than doing tests, we need to have a way of testing if everything just breaks or not. And that way would be running the app and going with the functions that are being called on the app side, uh, just verifying in the back end if everything is all right, not crashing or returning any sort of funny errors that would handle. Uh, sometimes I'm kind of disappointed at myself. <laughs> Like, I'm always preaching, you need to do tests, you need to do tests, and then 
I'm like, oh, but now if I just invest in tests, I need to review how to do them to separate business logic from UI testing. And that would be weeks. Uh, unfortunately, this week, I might not be able to stream on s Friday. It's Friday because uh, uh, I'm going around, moving a bit, and I might not be at home. And therefore, it would be complicated just to do a live stream, even if it was outside. So, yeah, it might be a trippy, a tricky kind of week, this one, or this weekend at least. So, I do have a surprise by the weekend, but right now, let's just work with what we have. It's been a very complicated day for me. <laughs> uh, very distracted, not really motivated. And although I know that motivation is a myth, you need just to shut up and just do your job. There are some days that are easier than others just to do that. I think what I should have done is not trying to insist, but rather get up and just going outside, go for a walk. That would be like 20 minutes I would invest in making the rest of my productive day better, rather than trying to insist and basically failing miserably. That's just life. So tomorrow is a new day, and tomorrow I need just to... Or this week I need just to work extra hard to compensate for today but for now we are working on our awesome project here which I've been talking about getting a backend for this one but Uh, it's already informing us that... Oh, right, the backend is not starting. Started. Now, when I do this... Okay. Was that an error? No. That's really weird, isn't it? Like, on the first try, it did fail. Hmm... And there was an error. Type error. Hmm. We need to take a look at that in the future. Right now, it's not crashing. So far. And it seems to be working fine. Gets us our data. We didn't remove this one. And let's just give us something to do the next time then. We 
go. Uh, apparently there's a... Uh, oh, it changes that I didn't push. Which kind of kind of worrisome because the I did merge things yesterday on the development branch. Oh well, I guess I messed that one up. Hopefully not, but we'll take a look uh, soon enough. Uh, but for now, name of the issue is. Issue number 13. So, first of all, would be start, and that would be feature, and that would be 13, right? Yep, it's created with success. And now, let me take a look at what changes. Oh! <laughs> Why did I really? I need to take care of that in the future. This one be finished. Finish. And this is the one that I want. Third thirteen. There we go. So I just removed the extra date, I believe. So, yep. And let's just go step by step. Thirteen, remove extra dummy data. Here, what I did was, uh, yeah. Was change the order, uh, refactor, import order, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So where should we begin from? The windfall? Yeah. All right. So everything seems to be all right here. Don't need to do anything extra extraordinary. Which is fine. Uh, it's perfect. Okay, and now what he's doing is oh, let me just do it yeah, inside of the source folder. Hmm. Important routes. Route seems to be fine as well. Just to keep the consistency, let's just say here it's imports. So be missing comments. Now, what did you talk about Scrammer here? Add missing comments. Does that sound all right? Ah, it does sound really weird, but oh well. We need to adjust as we go. If there's something not correct. So this one is all right as well. We have feet and we have desktop. So let's see. The one we need to do here. Oh, I do need a coffee. I didn't take one. You're like, oh, I don't need coffee. I'm all right. And then now it's just hitting me like a brick. I might need to do a quick break just to get one. But let's see. We have a route. For the feed and basically we're saying get uh get what the hell did I do here? Feed get feed data. 
Why? Why did I do just no? Can't defeat Data. Now this one is not correct, is it? It isn't. So instead, let me do a different thing. And that thing would be. So the idea would be I get to feed data of a user because feed data and user free data is quite different, isn't it? For every single user, I need some sort of system that basically says, right, for that user, just get all the posts uh, from whatever to now, and here's the data. So let's just say uh, get user ID, what needs to be done. Ask a method for the user feed. Now, obviously, this is a very simple <laughs> explanation what needs to happen, isn't it? And does it need to be... Let me take a look at some something that which is a problem, which is pagination. So, no, yes. How to do pagination? Uh, let me see. Beep, 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 any they're promising us the world. Let's see. Why do I have a feeling I've seen this guy before? Just because of the, the flags here. <laughs> and this... This green now matches this, the the logo here. As, as it is, it doesn't. It's too bright. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, that's not the main issue. And it's too... Too dark here. To be just slightly brighter. That's not... I'm not here to analyze this website. <laughs> I was like, hire me. Hmm, are you good enough for this? Uh, old habits of testing things, I guess. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> so, what is pagination anyways? Let's imagine your database table. Uh -huh. Number of particular orders, so pagination is when you want to check or page of rows at the same time, let's say 20. Sure. On the first page, we want to select from page and start position 0 to the 20th. Then on the second page, we want to select uh, from page, position 20 to position 40 and so forth. Okay. Implementation server side, as far as I know, there are two ways to implement it. Not a good thing when you start your, fr your phrase saying, as far as I know, because that's kind of like... So, it's just based on experience and not research, or... <laughs> you know, I mean, he's, he's not getting me in that confidence that... You no, know, I'm going to get from this article, which should be... I'm going to get the best solution possible. Well, let's see. I might be wrong. Use this method when you have an API. The client decides page size, sorry, forgot the title. Use this method when you have an API that can be consumed by different clients, such as web application and a mobile application a mobile application. Therefore, each dev team can decide what suits best for their needs. For this approach is useful to picture pagination concept as if we were in an Excel spreadsheet. That way, the variables that we will send make a little bit more sense. Huh. First one is the limit that stands from desired page size. Okay. Second would be the skip. That means that how many rows a database should be jumped over. Oh. 
Golden Goose. Uh, I forgot what Golden Goose was. It wasn't the plugin for uh, putting uh, Mongo into uh, Node. Damn it! For some reason, Node just disappeared. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. I guess we're going to use this one then. <laughs> Like, do you know how to use Mongo? I mean, I know how to use Mongoose. <laughs> like, skipping the basics. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see it later. No worries. So there's a limit, which comes from the query. There's a skip, which comes from the query. Uh, what is our option to? The server decides page size. On oh, this one is a bit better. Um... Client just send what page number they want and trust the server will deliver the correct page size. Inside the server, you still have a limit and skip on usage. And the process is pretty much the same as before. So, uh, page, uh, they basically ask, I just ask for a page. Uh, using the three layer architecture or Node.js architecture, uh, basically just a class where we have our business logic. Uh, what is a tree layer? Bulletproof Node.js architecture. Why? Why is this familiar? I heard this before. Rocks. So I think I've seen. Yep, I think I've seen this article. Yep, I've seen this article. Oh, I recall these layers. Yep. Oh, I, I think I've been on several streams now on this page. So let's do one thing. Let's do some greeting. But let me get the coffee first so that I could just stand on this. Let me just put break here, which is this one. It is a quick break and I'll be right back, guys. See you in a minute.
And we are back. Let me put the stream again. Stream, stream, stream. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Hello again. I had a wonderful idea while I've done the break. Um, is to create. I just say here, projects. I need to do some cleanup here. But the idea would be to I have like a. I do have a, a board on uh, Trello, which is not public, but you know, I kind of show it from time to time. Uh, but the idea here would be, uh, I had an idea. Now let's create a board just for uh, projects. So let's call it projects. Uh, I mean, it looks all right. Uh, projects, yep, there we go, that's the word. And do we want a photo? Sure, I mean, a forest. It's quite nice. It's almost like the number of projects that we've taken. <laughs> hmm. Now, what was the idea to, let's see. Yeah, this is quite an uh, overkill, isn't it? Just have a whole port. I'll, I'll tie it up later, no worries. Oh, it's quite nice. I'll do. This would distract me. Just a tiny bit. Let me see what I have here. Ooh. Uh, I can only see <laughs> this part of the photo. I mean, what the hell? It's just, you know, I was expecting a bit more. The ocean. It's been a while since I've seen the ocean. I used to live by the sea, and now it's not. I live on the countryside in England. Uh, no ocean for me. Mm. But I do have a river. From time to time we say hi. How are you doing? Mm. So let's not waste too much time. Abstract red. I'll drink my coffee. Ooh. Schmecks him. Does it look right? Would it look, look fine? You too much. Oh, this one is my uh, wallpaper on my phone. Nice. And it's quite good. I do like it. Not biased at all. <laughs> Let me see this one first. This is not an important thing. And yet, here I am. Trying to debate myself over uh, what needs to be. Oh, this one. This one is quite good. This one was a wallpaper of mine one time. So the idea would be a uh, tiny. Oh, well. Kits. Now, what is the tiny mobile kit? Uh, MVP. I can't. And an MVP. MVP. Yeah. Now, what do I mean by all of this? The idea would be. What is this? What would be this one? Checklist. Let me put it here. So the idea would be, and I wanted to write as I say it. Um, that would be would be to have an app basically ready to to do, to basically deploy the projects. So the idea would. Be that you'd build just a minimum of minimum of things like almost like our app right now and we can have a project that we can deploy to do other things so if someone in the community needs it they can just download it if we want to do another project we can just go there take the project and build that project although right now i'm still doing some adjustments on the back end and i still finishing this project so this one needs to go to the back burner you know not starting a new project in the middle of another one, which was also the interruption of another one. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's quite uh, it's been quite a train. So I want to finish this one, make sure that we can conclude some projects. Now this for new payment ninja. Never heard of it. And this is part of the logo. Nice. Oh, this is an adorable shark with a poker chip. Let me see what this does. Uh, 
Probably bedding. I don't know the language. But it's fine. That's not important. Mongoose will be something that we're going to use anyways. Oh, there's a page with documentation. So we can close this friend. Boop. And let, me, let us see the bulletproof node project before we see the, the pagination. Just to have an idea of architecture wise, what it needs to be doing. And uh, let me do also another thing which I haven't done in a while, at least. Uh, which is, let me open a document and take some notes. Because if this is an important thing, we kind of need to, you know, build a project out of this. Or build some content out of this. And by content, I mean something that has meaningful, both for me, especially for me. I'm being selfish here, but uh, this project is mostly for me. And second, for the community. But if I can share this, this knowledge with the community, for someone that is just starting with nodes, uh, this is quite important because this is like step two, which never appears on tutorials, which is right now that you know how to do another world and connect things. How do I do architecture? What is a good architecture? How do I organize things? Should I do certain structure or the other one? And these are the kind of questions that never are answered because it's very opinionated, but there's no, you know, guidelines or something that says, well, you can try this one or you can try the other ones. Everything is flexible, but there's this path that you can take and you can explore other ones if you want. Oh damn, this one is quite bold. I need to see this one because I'm using a uh, passport, I believe, on a different project. Uh, other things than this one. So let's see. Uh, bullet proof node. Oh, yes. Projects are actually. I need to improve my typing skills because I'm just every every sort of key. I just yeah, an example. Nice. We do like examples, don't we? We do. And I got to that creepy part that I'm preferring. <laughs> it's for me and the listeners as we. So let's see. Uh, Express.js is a great framework for making Node.js uh, REST API. However, however, yep, uh, I was expecting project for some reason. Um, it doesn't give you any clues on how to organize your Node.js project. It is true. While this, month sound, uh, this may sound silly, it is a real problem. Not really a problem, it's more like you're free to do whatever you want. Uh, it's like you giving giving you like a blank project and you basically say you, you do whatever you want to you're like uh what do i do <laughs> so the correct organization of your node.js project structure will avoid duplication of codes exactly will improve stability and potentially will help you scale your service if it is done correctly and this is very important because if we do things in a way that just locks ourselves from scaling there, there, that's when the problems start to rise. And the patchy and dodgy code starts to appear, and we don't really want that one. We want to keep our code as flexible as it can be. Uh, this post is, extent, is an extensive research from my years of experience dealing with poor structured Node.js project. Missing an S. Unless <laughs> he's just referring to his many years of dealing with one project bad patterns and countless hours of refactoring codes and moving things around yet yeah. i i know your pain i've done i've been on the same path as you but on different things other than back end this is the important thing uh the folder structure so let's say uh folder structure and we are just going to keep some notes here uh, we don't need to copy like everything uh, word by word. We just need to keep notes so that we can just reference quickly the document. So the basic structure would be this yeah, is text. Uh, and now I could do just one better. Just put it like this. Aha. So there's the app.js. Uh, and we did the same thing, I believe so. Uh, not on this one, but on this one. On the source folder, there's our, well, it's server, not app. 
but it's quite easy to understand since we, if we go to the package.json, you can see which file it does run or not on your machine. On the, the server, sorry, that's what I meant. Here is the Node.js. So there's the API, config, jobs, loaders, uh, models, service, subscribers, and types. Now this is something, let me, uh, sorry, let me type this one here. Uh, so it's like uh, from source, right? This should be, uh, the root of a project. Now, this just to say that, oops, sorry. it's just to say that there might be other files on the root of the projects as we have, such as testing. The testing folder would be on the root of the project itself. And then there's the uh, app.js, which would be uh, app, exactly, app entry point. We can just copy this part. Let's put it this pretty, and then there's API, which is a folder for handling the endpoints, I believe. So, first route controllers for all the endpoints of the app. Yep. It would be a uh, handle route control. Let's put route as an important word. Roll with one L and API it's again. Uh, it's app with lowercase. Okay, I thought it would be always uppercase or files. Because of the classes, but maybe I'm just used to Java. Not JavaScript. <laughs> so there's config. Which uh I mean this is not looking the best one. No, it's all right. I was thinking of doing something like this, but then kind of looks a bit weird. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Config is what environment variables and configuration related stuff. Configuration files. There's their jobs. This one is interesting. What is jobs? Jobs is. Job definitions for agenda.js. Do we know what this is? We don't, or at least I don't. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but mm -hmm. we'll, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Uh, so let's just put a question mark for now. Then there's loaders. And what are loaders? Uh, split the startup process into modules. So I guess it's a start of the server question mark and then there's the models well this one I know uh, not really database models that's not really what that is it's data models because you might use the sign structures of data on your backend and not necessarily on your server and your api is not really your backend or rather the api is one part of the backend so the whole backend will be the database and the api and everything else that is related to it but you know database is not just the only part so yeah it needs to have a more generic name and then there's the services services what is services service would be service would be out oh, business logic is here uh doesn't say what this service is uh i suppose service here would be in the context of uh, uh it provides us with access to certain things like it is on angular like uh want to access date or something we just do a service rather than us directly accessing it because then we can inject services there's subscribers which is what event handlers for async tasks 
So what's the difference between subscribers and services? No, now on subscribers, I understand that he might be listening for something. And then once he receives that, that stimulus of sorts, basically just reacts to it. But still it's not, not concrete information I have here. So therefore I'll just put a question mark and I'll come back to it later. Type declaration files, TypeScript. Uh, shouldn't this be on models? I'll just buy two, okay. I'll copy it. So let's put types here, types. And I like that it says for TypeScript. Yeah, so it's implied that TypeScript is the way to go. Now we have our folder, folder structure. Uh, I mean, we do have some questions. Four of them to be more concrete, but that's fine. We want answers now. There's more than one way. More, more than an order. Just the way to order JavaScript files. It's life. It's big. <laughs> uh, then there's the tree layer architecture. Okay. Uh, that would be what? Sandwich. Ooh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, how about the emoji here? Uh, how? Yeah, emoji folder. Emoji is quite a good idea for this one. Oh, emojipedia. Pedia? Emojipedia, probably. Nice. It looks so pretty. But yeah, I want an explanation for the, the whole structure. Uh, it is to the principle of separation of concerns. Okay, I'm moving the business logic away from Node.js routes. Okay, that's fair. And uh, then we have the controller, I have the service layer, and we have the data layer. Okay. Do, can I copy this image? Copy image. Nice. And, uh, really? Doesn't open a new image or a model window or something? Okay. Yeah, someday I want to use a business logic on a CI tool. I'm not going far in a recursive task. An API call from Node.js server to itself is not a good idea. Uh, okay. Uh, what does this have to do with this? This thing. Because it makes sense. Um, it makes sense in relation to the previous image. So Express will be our framework. So that's the controller, right? So the root controller, controller, okay, fine. And there's the service layer, which is basically a class. Yeah, and just provides a service, which should be like contracts of sorts. That's fine as well as a class or as implemented in a class or something. That's fine. And then Mongoose ODB, ODM would be database management, object database management. I have no idea. Fine. Uh, but okay. Don't put your business logic inside controllers. Okay. Uh, where is the business logic? Business logic should be on the data. Probably. Excellent question. Where should the business logic be? It should be on the data, right? And then we just connect to that uh, results, basically. If you want something like say posts, uh, there should be a post uh, data access layer that we just connect to it. And then there's the, all the business logic there from verifying if the user is valid to getting the data to the correct user and provide that. Okay. With your business logic and controllers. Okay.
Uh, use the first, first controls to store your, the business logic of your information. This, this quickly becomes target code. Jesus, I'm like, you know, when you start to scratch something, itch, and then it just moves place in your body. In a bit like that right now. I don't know what's happening. Well, why does that happen? To be honest. But well, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Try to resist. Not scratch. Anything else? Uh, this is quickly because we can go. Does you need to write unit tests? You will end up with dealing with complex mocks for requests or response uh, express JS objects. That's true. Uh, it is complicated to distinguish when a response should be sent or when to continue progressing in background. A set response is sent to client. Let's say after response. Response is sent to the client. Uh, here's an example of one not to do. Okay. And we have uh, a route which is doing a post. So basically, this will be a on this route a slash will send and uh, is a sync. Okay, this is a new one. Why is this a sync? I think it should be here. But okay, uh, there's request, there's response, and then there's next. Honestly, let me just see what the next is. I never know. So let me just do instead of one. Right, so here let's put this one as node RG. Architecture, architecture, and nodes, basics. So the idea would be now I can put nodes, nodes from node here. So I just want to understand uh, next. Uh, so next would be not <laughs> the the brands, but express. Express. This is a sport of Express. What's next? So, let me see. This will be middleware, which is essentially uh, a component. Have access to the request object, response object, the next middleware function in the application request response cycle. The next middleware function is commonly denoted by a variable named next. Yep. Uh, so basically, what it's saying is just middleware is a, a method that has access to the request. Uh, state variables. Uh, it would be request response next. Uh, normally express request response. Yep. Uh, so middleware functions can perform the following tasks. Execute any code, make changes to request and response, and request response cycle call the next middle function, middleware function in the stack. Yeah, but it doesn't say what that is, does it? And the current middleware function, if the current middleware function does not end the request response cycle, it must be called next to control to the next middleware function otherwise the request will be left hanging and I see so I can do this 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 Huh? 
An express application can be used, can use the following types of middleware. Application level, router level, error handling, built-in, third-party middlewares. Okay. It then, this might be useful. Not really. It's like just about everything, really. But okay, so next is now clarified. We can just close it for now. And, uh, and lose this one. We'll go for the list of things to... No, actually, we can close this one. But it's easy to remember that we need to use Node.js. So here's an example of what not to do. Okay, so now we have rest body. That's next. Uh, is user valid? So there's validators that use use the DPO, the transfer object. Where does that come from? It comes from request on body. Okay. This should be should be a middleware to be handling by a library to like okay. If user valid, okay. If it would be here, not valid. Sorry, it would be status fourteen. I think. This is quite interesting. Oh, I haven't used this one before. Lots of business logic here. So user record. Uh, there's the delete, delete, there's constants, whatever. And here's the optimization <laughs> that messes up everything. The response is sent to the client. Sent to client. Um. Yes. So yeah, there's a response. But then... Alright, oh, isn't it need to do a return as well? Okay. I would assume that. But... Okay. Uh, but a code is continuous. Okay. And that would be a solid record. Wait. How is it... So... Is it doing other things? It's not returning data here as well, is it? Is a record? Oh damn. It's changing data after the request. Ooh, this is not good. This is not good. It might change data. And before the request just gets to the ser to the user, use a uh, service layer for your business logic. Yeah, but explain to me that business logic layer then. Uh huh. Uh -huh. This layer where the business should live. Just a collection of classes with clear purposes, following the solid principles applied to Node.js. Okay. Uh, in the layer, uh, there should not exist any form of SQL <laughs> query. Yes. I've seen code that basically does queries directly to the database. On the controller. And it's just the most awful thing ever. Uh, okay. So, let's see. In this layer, should there exist, no, exist any form of SQL like uh, query, use the data access layer and longest on the switch. Oh, damn! Oh, damn! Among Us is on the switch. Finally, I have it for the Steam, but I mean, having Among Us just as a, as a go to on my console, that, that would be pretty sweet. But let's just continue. Let us focus on the job ahead and then we'll just have time to do a break and play Among Us. So, in this layer, it shouldn't exist. Move code away from Express GS router. Yes. And then don't pass the request or the response objects to the service layer. Okay, very important. Keep the object inside the request itself. Don't return anything related to HTTP transport layer like status, codes, or headers. From the service layer. Uh, now this one, service layer would be this one, the middle one. 
but don't return anything related to HTTP transport layer, like a status code or a header from the service layer. Now, if you are returning a code, how does one do that? The controller needs to just put something on the response. And if your response has a code, you know, like this one, you need to do something like that. So let me see solution. And solution should be interesting. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Issue of the day, I guess. Okay, here's how your service uh, behind the scenes. Okay, so we have here our refactored codes, which is based on this one, I would assume. But let me do a comparison code by line by line. So this would be the example, correct? Yes. But now let me put the, the old one. And this will be the new one. I can collapse this, uh, this sidebar, but that's fine. Uh, so, we love the request, but it's not, it's a sync. Now we have this middleware, which is validators.user signup. Uh, so the middleware take care of validation. Okay, cool. And I bet on that middle where it basically has an X and it basically comes here. Okay. And then what it does is there's an async task. Okay. The same thing is here, the same parameters. Uh, the actual responsibility of the root layer, which is the same as this one. Okay. The actual responsibility that he's talking about is just getting the data out of it. Uh, normally, I'll just verify if that data exists. If not, just returns a status for for something. 421. Let me just confirm. HTTP status uh, missing parameters. It's for 412. Precondition fails. I oh, know, sorry, 422. There we go. Almost 420. <laughs> but no, it's 422, which basically says that uh, you're just missing some parameters on your request. It's not really a bad request because the request is correctly done, but it's more like it's just missing some parameters. So that's one thing I like to do if I can just find this one when I try to extract it, of course. Uh, just continuing, uh, this business logic is removed to a user service dot sign up so instead of doing the sign up here oh i'm just do delegating this to a user service and passing on the user dto okay and then i'm just returning the user and the company and this where does this come from oh right it's just returning I didn't see this one. I saw this as like the arguments of a function. Now it's returning the results uh, to a user and as a company, and then it's returning on the response as a user and as a company. And then on the user service, it's a class, right? So uh, in relation to our model here, we have the controller, which is this friend here, sorry, this friend here, which is the route.post which basically calls all the service layers. And then the service layers will call the data access points, but never it will be data access layer calling the controller or the controller calling the data access layer. It's just delegating responsibilities. So, just continuing here, we have our class, which will be uh, the service class or the service layer. Um, that service layer will provide us with access to the uh, data access layer or the mongoose uh, data on our case on this specific implementation but obviously it could be either a text file or whatever and that's the beauty of it is that you can implement just about anything if you have things separated by layers and just to compare again uh, 
inside the class we have the user service that we'll be calling sign up which and is expecting a user DTO so there's a sign up there's the user object and uh, what is going to return is two objects a user and a company let's see how does it do there's an async obviously because this is being called inside of an async function and is doing an async request so therefore yeah we need to be in sync uh, let's see there's constant user records and um, there's the user model which is the data model for the user i believe to not create oh so it's delegating the creation of the models to the models itself is that the correct way to do it okay oh uh, let me take note of that let me put here as questions just below uh, this was all right why did it questions and the one that i have now is good uh, models so should models uh, initialize their own objects because models are just models they shouldn't handle themselves oh, no they should handle themselves but not in the sense that they implement themselves this is like a factory of sorts but still uh, okay let's just agree that that's that's the reality right now and we'll just try to see if that's the correct way to do it and then we do the same thing well for the other ones so we have the user model the company model and we also have a salary model which was not imported now this is a bug <laughs> but that's fine i, I understand the, the, the concept behind it so there's a salary model as well which is also created here exactly uh this is like a cascade of sorts because this user model is going to be used, the user record is going to be used here, and then the company record will be used here, along with the user model. That's fine. And then we do what other things to the data that we need to do. And then we call another service to do uh, the sign up sequence for us. We just wait for it, probably use uh, some sort of promise. And then once everything is done and confirmed, we return an object which basically contains a user and a company uh, which was the object that we have here so by doing this way we are extracting an object on this side or uh, that has just you know, like two constants a user and a company fine okay oh, i think i've seen the way to do this and then there's a use pub sub layer 2. Uh, the pub sub layer patterns goes beyond the three classic layer architecture proposed here, but it's extremely useful. So you're proposing one thing, but explaining got it now another one. Okay. Oh, I'll wait. Let's see what does this do. The simple Node.js API endpoint that creates the user right now. Wait. Uh, the simple node.js API endpoint that create the user right now may want to call the third call third party services maybe to an analytical service or maybe start an email sequence sooner than later the simple create operation will be doing several things and we ended up with in a single function that validates the principle of single responsibility that's true so to better separate responsibilities from the start, your so your code remains. Sorry, I misread this. So it's better to separate responsibilities from the start, so your code remains maintainable. Yep, that's true. And what are you going to do in relation to that, or in relation to these two examples here? We have the user service. as 
event tracker is in a user. Yeah, lots of services, which will be this friend here, the whatever. An imperative call to a dependent service is not the best way of doing it. Okay, a better approach is to emitting an event. Uh, this is a user sign up with this email. Okay, and you're done. Now it's the responsibility of the listener to do the job. I think you're done is kind of... Hmm. That's the goal, not necessarily. So what he's doing is getting here instead of actually implementing that. We are creating an event emitter. So the way that this works is uh, like uh, there's things that emit uh, requests to do a service and then there's receptors which receive the requests and execute code. Uh, it's a way to work really synchronous in a way that instead of you putting everything inside of one module, you can have it like an independent uh, service somewhere that basically listens for the event uh, of user sign up. I wonder how to do the, the return of that event, but that's a story for now, in a second, I guess. So, return on, there we go, that's the implementation. He's receiving a user in a company, yep. And he's doing the logic that is here. Yeah, damn it, I just drank a coffee. So we have this one, which would be inside the event listener. Uh, still has the user and the company, but not the salary. Oh, okay. It is the user record, just user here. And uh, then it does analytic.event, which is the same. Well, it's the same as this one, yeah. But it's missing the... The salary. It's interesting. It might just be an example. And therefore, I just forgot to add something. Maybe. And then there's event emitter on user sign up async. Oh, there's the salary. Which is a different one. Okay. And then there's another one. Oh, right. This will be the last one. So, how is this? Because this is like the same one. Same name. How can this know which one to call? No idea. Is Are they being called in sequence? I don't know, and let's see. Oh. Jesus. But then I need to see event emitters. How to use event meters on node. Yes. And then there's dependency injection. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, this one is quite popular and I do quite enjoy it. So, as someone said, it's a very cheap concept. But it's sold as a very high tech thing. Essentially what dependency injection is for the uninitiated it's just saying that instead of you putting all of your dependencies inside of one module, those dependencies are initialized elsewhere. And basically the reference of that initialization is passed on as an argument to that module. That's it. There's no fancy things or whatever. 
It's just simply saying, instead of initializing inside of one module, the dependency is injected via the methods inside the class or methods or whatever. That's a, you know, passing a variable from one side to another one. I know. It sounds pretty easy as I'm saying this. And the concept is, but obviously the, de the devil is in the details. Sometimes implementing that part is the, the hard part, isn't it? I mean, obviously, implementing something is always the hard part, I guess. Hey, no, Jess. You're correct, Grammarly. So, yeah, all those services... Excuse me. ...should be injected. Through dependency injection and not really create it here, initialize it here. I mean, that's not the way to go. He offers three ways of seeing. This is with no dependency injection, which will be we have the three models, and then we have the user service, and then there's a constructor, as you normally have on classes, and then there's a sign up method, which we used before. That's fine. And then code with manual dependency injection. Okay. So basically, as you can see on the constructor, instead of us needing to do things on a constructor or basically calling things here, initializing things. We receive these three models, uh, match them with our own, initialize our own um, properties with those and use them inside. So basically the dependency, uh, the injection is the, the three uh, models. And now, let me see how it does that just do with uh, custom dependencies. What does it mean with inject custom dependencies? So, salary model mark. Wait, what? Why is it doing a mark? This is a test. This is not really a... This is the good thing for tests. If you wanted to test a service, you can inject whatever you want here. So why is it doing a mock? Which, to be honest, it's just a normal you know, variable, but sure. And there's a calculation. And it's putting here. Went on dependencies as... I don't get it. I didn't get this one. To be honest. Okay. Um, user service can have is infinite and refactor every. It when you add a new one it is a boring, narrow prone task. Why dependency uh, injection frameworks were created? Yep. The idea is that you declare your dependencies in a class, and then we need an instance of that class. You just call the service located. Yep. Uh, type the uh, npm library that brings a dependency injection to Node.js. Can read more and type D on the official documentation. Warning, TypeScript example. <gasps> Whoa. And why do you use TypeScript now in the middle of a JavaScript project? I do prefer TypeScript to JavaScript, but... Still, uh, I don't get why you're mixing those two together. Is it because of the type? So there's a constructor, as we saw, same as this one. Oh, it's injecting as with the at service. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, okay. Then there's get my user as a user ID. Then it just finds the user on the you know model slash db slash whatever. Now we can do the access to the database of the service as well, which is a good thing. And uh, now type you will take care of resolving the any dependency in uh, dependency. Am I reading this correctly? Now to type the will take care of resolving any dependency the user service required. Okay, yep. I forgot about this part. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. 
uh, this container and gets the user. User service, okay. This user user service instance, okay. Abusing service locator calls is an anti-pattern. I yeah, shouldn't be talking about that panel right now, friend. This dependency injector which express in JS in Node.js. Using dependency injection in express.js is the final piece of the puzzle for this Node.js problem. Okay. I thought the route was from Express. Okay. Awesome. Project looks great. Uh, what did you do? What piece of thing did you use from route? Doesn't say. Because now we were talking about dependency injection. And he's saying using dependency injection with express.js, but didn't change anything. Still the same. Yeah. What the hell? Awesome project looks great. It's so organized that it makes me want to code something right now. <laughs> okay. Um, Any test example. By using dependency injection, is unique testing becomes really simple. You don't have to mock requests, objects, uh, request response objects, or require calls. Simple. Exactly, because everything is inside. Uh, their own classes, therefore it doesn't require anything because everything that is required is just injected. Uh -huh. Unit service and then user, we have one. So this is uh, Jasmine. But Jasmine has a different name, something with J. That's fine. I, I understand what what's going on here. So this is a test. You just describe uh, what is it doing, like in terms of a group. So there's a bigger group, which is user service unit tests. And then there's testing the sign up a group, I must say. Always describe will be just what it is, it's not doing anything. And then there's tests, which basically are your test. Now this is quite a big one. You should have put it before just to initialize this test, but since it's just one, uh, that's fine. So what do we have here? Should create a user record and emit uh, user sign up events. Needs to be a sync, very important, because uh, it's an async task. Otherwise it will just fail. So there's a constant, it'll just emit um, mock exactly fn is just to create a mock file or a mock object and then there's a user module which has a create and returns a mock which an i mock id there's the company model which will be mock as well and then here's the user input which has well mock data i suppose then there's the user model User service, sorry. And uh, basically, once you use them, you try to use your functions as normal and see if it does what it needs to do. Okay, cron job, really. Never want to know just set time up. <laughs> on the primitive way of delaying executing your code, but on a framework that persists your jobs and executes them in a database. This way you'll have control over the failed jobs and feedback of those who succeeded. Okay, this one is quite good. Uh, which I need to see because I've seen some projects that use timeout. And I didn't know it was so unreliable. Although it's just this gentleman's opinion. Or at least I should, I have the job or the obligation of just checking these things. This is being used on a day to day basis. Following the battle tested concepts of 12 factor app for. What is this? Methodology for building software as a service 
apps part. Okay. Something to read then. To do. To read. read it later basically what he's saying is is it not this one oh also this one to read important i don't want to lose any any sort of uh literature that might be important in the project or for my professional life it's two in one i'm learning for this project and also learning something that i could be using anywhere else so let's see uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've seen this one, but I didn't see the dot .f, which is in bold, which I use every single day. But my eyes did just go 12 factor app. <gasps> what is that? I need to click on it. So let's just continue following the battle test the concept of 12 factor app for Node.js. The best approach is to store, 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 store the API keys and database string connections by using a dot .environment. Kind of. Uh, this one should be not only not committed, it should be uh, for testing, apparently. The, you should inject, uh, as far as I've seen recommended twice, you, uh, you should inject the variables uh, on the your node environment rather than relying on dot .environment files because they might be snatched. <laughs> And if someone just breaks in on your server, then there he goes. Like a bunch of access files conveniently in one file to go. Take away, basically. <laughs> Take away for hackers would be this file. Put an environment file that must be never committed, but it has to exist by default values in your repository. Then the npm package dot uh, process dot environment object will not. It could be enough, but uh, I like to add an extra step. Have a config.index.ts file where the .nav .environment npm package file where the npm package. Why am I reading this wrong? Have a file where the npm package unloads. Environment file. I think I don't get this sentence. It'd be like removing this one because that would make sense. File where the .NET environment package loads the environment file. So I think this one is should be here. And then I use an object to store the variables so that so we have a structure and code auto completion. Wait, what? Why are you doing this? Shouldn't be. What's the advantage of doing this? Why doesn't... I don't get it. Okay, so what he's doing, I, I guess, what uh, I, as far as I can recall, instead of creating a configuration file, you basically create that on the. Okay, that's it. No, now I see what he's doing. Yeah, I've seen this behavior being used. Instead of you being basically calling the variables directly, you put all the configurations inside uh, a variable, because these ones will always be strings. Uh, the way they store is like almost like a constant string. And uh, doing like this, you just call actual variable, and you can check if they exist or not. And uh, that's fine. So we avoid holding your code with process dot never exactly. <laughs> there we go. There's the explanation just down below. Having okay, auto completion, you don't know, know how to name your variable exactly. Auto completion will also be a good one because. If you try to import these ones, you, you cannot see what's inside of them. Well, this one, well, you know. And if you're using TypeScript, you know the type as well. Then that leaves us with the loaders. This part from Double Tree. Double Tree Tech Micro Framework. Last execute and configure your modules. Loaders. 
in a proper order, helping you to organize bootstrap codes uh, in your application. What does bootstrap mean? I always seen the term, but I never got like the term. What is bootstrap? Uh, a loop at the back of a boot is to pull it on. Uh, no. <laughs> Although interesting, that's not the one. The one is computing, a technique for loading a program into a computer by means of few initial instructions which uh, enable an uh, introduction of the rest of the program from an input device. Computing fuller form of boot sense of uh, this one doesn't. So technique to load uh, into a program by means of a few initial instructions which enable the introduction of the rest of the program from an input device. So it's like like the minimal kind of thing to run and basically just put everything else later. Seems like it. Oh, I can close this one. Type the uh, this one. We need to put it here as well. Let's do this friends. But without depending on their package. <laughs> it is at this plate the startup process, you know, into testable modules. Ooh. Okay, so that responds to uh all this. Uh-huh. Modules that start up our server. Could be great. Breaking should be break down the small components for better testing. Yeah, normally I do this as a um, on the route. And there's the whole initialization stuff, yep. More stuff, maybe start up Redis, add more uh, middlewares, yep. As you see, this is part of the application, it can be a real mess. I've seen real messes on this part, yeah way of dealing with it. There's loaders. Mean on the loaders would be where? Dude, really? I mean, why did you go to the top? You just needed to follow from where it was. Oh, well. uh, ooh, there's something. Oh, don't start together. It's on discount. No, thank you, not yet. Then there's loaders. Loaders uh, is an async process. Uh, which to express app. Okay. Where is this express app in use of sorts? Nothing else then. Okay. Weird. Okay. Um, this would be from Express. Although this is more like the routing kind of thing that Express, but this part, yeah, this, this one is Express. Uh, the body parts of such a good stream. Losing almost half an hour trying to look why uh, JSON was not being parsed correctly. Because it was missing a body parser for JSON. Hmm. But okay, uh, this one is not really that well explained, but that's fine. 
Uh, I think that's just enough just for today. I mean, my hand is just... Uh, I need to rest. I just need to take a, a quick break. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, I think we've done enough. I think we just studied just a tiny bit. We learned a lot. I thought this would be a bit different from mobile apps. But surprise, surprise, it's not just because normally mobile apps, backends, and other things are based on similar principles. The principles of separation concerns, layers, whatnot. Those are kind of generic and can and should be implemented on different types of projects. And therefore, it is quite familiar for me, these kind of things, because I've seen them running before, but never saw an, a concrete implementation of how those should be done here. And I'm glad to know that it's quite similar to what I've known. So, uh, goals for the next stream would be get all this information on some of these notes, just polish just a bit, and do some... I'll leave the question marks for now. Because when I come back, I want to see, uh, uh, I'll put it here, uh, in a way that I'm doing some repeated kind of process to, of reviewing this. Uh, the goal would be for, uh, for me to just internalize just a bit better all these concepts. If I just do it throughout the days instead of just doing one day and saying, yeah, okay, and then I just forgot like immediately the next day. This way I can just practice just a bit, see if I still recall it, and just uh, review the process and everything. That's a, I think that's a better way for me to, to learn, just to do continuously kind of reviewing. Uh, but yeah, I guess that would be it for now. It is not a bad article, although sometimes of question if there's a bug or not there but that's just fine i mean i want just the, the the concepts the principles i didn't want just you know oh no it's not working because it's missing one thing that's fine i can google that part if that's correct or not i might be wrong anyways uh but yeah we've learned how to organize our node projects i've had some new ideas on how to organize our for seti backends and um there's still plenty to read after this. Because apparently there's three links here. We need to check them out. But yeah. I'm kind of ready to just start. Try to implement this. And also test. Because now I'm a bit more confident. On how to do those tests. And probably try to do the same thing on the app. Yeah, but not right, right now. I mean we're focusing now on the back end. Let's not just you know jump in from one to another one. Because then we kind of lose a bit of the momentum. Uh, and I just prefer to do all these tasks in one go. And then close that part and move to the other ones. Rather than be jumping from stream to stream. It's kind of like, oh right, what did I do last time? <laughs> but for now, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more content. And if you know any of the questions or have anything else to add to this, feel free to comment down below. I'm always... Uh, backend is not really my, as you can see, my main um, forte, my main skills. So I'm always trying to learn new ways of or how to organize the projects, how to handle certain scenarios, uh, the best packages, because those are always quite hard to find. There's 1,001, no, there's plenty of packages on NPM, and it's kind of hard just sometimes to distinguish what is really rubbish from an actual good one or one that doesn't spy on <laughs> on our app it just steals all of our data <laughs> but for now thank you so much for tuning in I like this video if you like it subscribe if you want to see more content and i'll see you guys on the next one and see you guys have a lovely day where's that button it's here <laughs>